Good afternoon. Welcome to our virtual open event. Uh, this is the first of a series of sessions for the Faculty of Community Studies. Uh, in this one, we're going to be covering childcare, health and social care, public services and sport. Uh, we've got a little video for you to watch and then the tutors are available at the end just to ask any questions that you may have. So sit back, relax and enjoy and enjoy the show. Hello, may I extend a warm welcome to Herefordshire and Ludlow College. My name is Alison Moon and I am the assistant principal of one of the two faculties based at the Hereford campus. Welcome to the Faculty of Community Studies. You will be greeted by the managers that lead the various courses and they in turn will introduce you to the course leaders. The courses we offer cover beauty, hairdressing, catering and hospitality, travel and tourism, business studies, access to HE, supporting teaching and learning, sport, public services, childcare and health and social care. We offer you the opportunity to study any one of these full-time courses along with a full tutorial programme to support your needs and the opportunity to reset GCSE Maths and English. Before we move on, I just want to tell you some of the reasons you may wish to study with us. We have an Ofsted pass rate of 93%. We have excellent physical resources. We offer a friendly, safe and open environment. We have lecturers with real world experiences. Added to that, we have students who have said that we are 93% making good progress. They also say 94% of them enjoy their lessons. 97% say their teachers encourage them to work hard and behave well. 95% say they receive good support from their teachers. 97% say they know how they are expected to behave. And 92% say, say they would recommend the college to a friend. So collect your questions and sit back as we welcome you to see what we have on offer in our dynamic faculty. Hi and welcome to our virtual open event. My area is one that includes health and social care, childcare, sport and public services. And all these areas have both level two and level three uh, that we can offer for you. Level two are for those that haven't quite got um, five GCSEs at grade um, four and above and also maybe those for those who are struggling with maths and English and may like to retake it or we can support you to retake it to enhance your career opportunities for the future. What we want to be able to offer to you in all of these subjects is a fabulous learning environment, one where you will meet other people who are like-minded so have chosen the same course as you have and that may like to um, support each other through the years or the one year or two years that you will be at the college. Our aim is to provide you with the best possible experience. Um, at college you don't call us Mr or Mrs or anything like that, you call us by our first names. We treat you at this college as adults and then obviously we, we expect you to behave like adults and actually you do. We have a wonderful um, learning environment that we can offer you. It's our courses are generally lots of fun, people like to come, they make really long lasting friendships and they have an amazing time at the college. So if you're interested in any of these subjects, we have also um, the subject leaders that can give you a brief introduction to what the courses are about in more detail. But they can also be online for you to be able to ask any questions and for them to answer any questions throughout the day. We are all here at college, we are still open and we are available to answer any queries that you may have in order to help you make a, a, a decision about your future. Our aim at the end of all of your education is to allow you to progress either into employment or into further education or into university if that's where you choose to, to go and an enormous number of our students 
find your way after you've finished your education. So I hope you enjoy our virtual open event. It's been a first for us and I hope it's been a first for you and that can, it can help you to make your decisions. Take care, bye. Hello, my name's Nicola Jones and I'm the lead tutor for Level 3 Health and Social Care here at Hereford College. Um, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the course. We currently run the two-year National Extended Diploma in Health and Social Care. This course is the equivalent of three A-levels and would give you direct um, access to apply to university. We do also run the one year foundation diploma in health and social care, which is ultimately year one of the two year course. We can run this, um, but mostly our students stay for the two years because the first year is only really the equivalent of one and a half A levels. So what it doesn't do is give you the direct access into university. However, you may choose to do that and then obviously after the first year you go out and you work in the sector. But the majority of our students stay for the two years because they're wanting to progress into um, higher education and university courses. So you'd need to continue on the two year course. So what is the course all about? Uh, well obviously it's about health and social care in all aspects, many settings and it's very broad. It's run by BTEC and it's assessed by a variety of methods. It's a mixture really of assignment based learning, uh, continuous throughout the two years, but there are some exams uh, throughout the, the time. There are two exams in year one, uh, one in the January, February window and one in the May, June. And then in year two, there is one exam in the January, February window and a controls assessment in the May, June. Something along the lines of what you have already probably experienced in school with regards to controlled assessments. The rest of the time, the course is assessed uh, using assignment based materials um, that you will be given throughout the year. The course is assessed via a pass, merit and distinction um, and obviously the, for each unit that forms part of the course you can get a pass, a merit or a distinction and then those grades are added up at the end of the year to give you your final grades for year one and year two. So what are our entry requirements? Well, we need you to have at least five GCSEs at grade C or above. Um, and it must include English language. Okay, that must be one of the five. But we are happy to take you without your maths on the pretense that you must resit your maths during the two year course. And we will provide the, the facilities to do this. You will have timetable maths lessons with our maths tutor and access to resit this during your two year course. And the reason we do that is, is because although we don't actually ask for it to come onto the course, to progress to the universities, all of the courses that our students tend to apply for will insist that you have maths GCSE. So that's the main reason why we ask you to do that. You primarily will be in college three days a week. Um, during that time you will also have some what we call directed study time which will be over in the library with our student support staff where you will be given access to IT facilities in order to work on your assignments and these will be timetabled alongside your actual um, tutor-led uh, sessions. So progression, where would the course lead you if you were to complete the two years? Well, it's quite broad um, and where most of our students go, I would say 96% of our students go on and progress to go to uni courses, um, it's quite wide and varied where they actually go. Uh, mostly they go to adult nursing, mental health nursing, midwifery, child nursing, social work, paramedic science, three year health and social care degrees, um, the primary school teaching, um, even we've had police and criminology. So as you can see, it's quite broad, 
and um, obviously uh, uh, widely accepted by all universities uh, with regards to those professions. As part of the course, you will be required to undertake work placement hours and it's a minimum of 100 hours in year one and a further 100 hours in year two. And usually we do this in what we call block week placements. And we usually do a week around October time, two weeks in January and a week in May, where you will be going out and you will be working in health and social care settings and then you will be coming back and applying what you have learnt in um, written assignments. But it is a compulsory part of the course and people cannot pass the course without um, completing the amount of work placement hours. So it's a very, very important part of it. We will ask you to source your own placements, although we can provide a lot of help and support because we do have a list of contacts of places that you can go. So that may be something that you may want to think about over the summer. If you're coming in straight from school to us, it's likely that you're probably only 16. And this does cause um, some issues in the initial placement in October because most places like you to be 17 in health and social care to go to it. But for the first placement, you will be allowed to do 20 hours to 30 hours uh, set, uh, placement in a school or a nursery to overcome that. So when we get to later in the course then, you'll move on to a different setting because we like you to experience different settings throughout the course. Now obviously to send you out there to work with vulnerable service users, we need you to complete something called um, a DBS check, a police check really, because we are sending you out there to work with these people, supervised but still to work with these vulnerable people. So we would need to do that uh, prior to enrolment. So we usually send for you to come in with all your documentation and we do this at the college. There is a cost of £47, uh, but that will come out to you explained in a letter. But the DBS that you will receive then, yeah, will come back to you. It will be yours and it will last for the whole two years of your college. Okay, so when you do that DBS, you just do it once for the whole two years. If you haven't applied, please do so. Um, um, and I would be looking forward to seeing you all in September. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, and then hopefully I can talk you through any worries or concerns. But hopefully I'll get to see you all in September. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jo Yearly and I'm part of the childcare department. I'm here to give you some information on the childcare courses that we run at the college. Both of our level two and our level three programmes are full time and they are a mixture of coming into college and gaining practical experience in settings. For the level two programme, you need 250 hours and for our level three programme, you need 365 hours in a suitable childcare setting. Another way that we support your learning is by arranging opportunities for you to participate in interactive workshops. These have included magical maths, stories in motion, sublime science. We also have visited a forest school setting to enable you to discover how children learn in the outdoor environment. So, entry requirements for our Level 2 programme are four GCSEs, Grade 3 and above, preferably one of these being in English language. Your timetable includes you being able to retake your English and Maths should you need to. The 14 units that you would complete are based on a pass or refer basis. These are marked by your college tutors and they include child development, equality and diversity, play and care routines. When you have successfully achieved this course, you can go into employment as an assistant practitioner or to be considered onto our level three programme. The entry requirements for our level three are five GCSEs, grade four and above. One of these must be in English language. You can retake your maths alongside your course if you need to. 
There are seven units as part of the level three, of which are marked by the college tutors, and they are graded D to A star, and they include play and learning, observation, child health. There is one external assessment aspect of the course, which is set and marked by the awarding body cash. After you've successfully completed your year one, you progress on to year two to complete a further six units and another controlled assessment. When you've completed both years, this would enable you to be um, employed as a supervisor in a, in a nursery setting or to progress on to university where my students have gone on to do primary teaching or child development in psychology, just to name just a couple. Hello, welcome to the Sports Department. My name is Nick Priest, I'm Programme Manager for Sport and Physical Education. For September 2020, we have two courses on offer. We have a Level 2 Technical Diploma in Sport, and we have a Level 3 Extended Diploma in Sport, which is equivalent to three A-levels. Our courses are on offer for anybody that's interested in working in the sports and leisure industry, whether that's a leisure attendant, personal trainer, sports coach, sports teacher, sports nutritionist, psychologist, sports therapist, the list really does go on. We even support students who have an interest in the armed forces. We're here to give you guidance and support and provide the experience to ensure all of our students are successful in any area of interest. Throughout this short video, I'm going to introduce you to members of the sports team who will explain about the courses in more detail and a little bit about college life. First up, Hayley Jenkins, she'll explain our entry requirements. Thanks Nick, I'm Hayley, one of the lecturers on the Level 2 and Level 3. Sport. I'm just going to explain to you the requirements that are required for both levels. At level two, you need to have uh, four GCSEs, grade two or an E or above, including maths and English. And for level three, it's five GCSEs, grade four or a C and above, including your maths and English. Um, it's not essential, but helpful to have um, a BTEC or GCSEP, but the staff will support you all the way through your course. Um, I'm going to hand over to Matt Watkins who's going to explain to you what to expect on the Level 2 Technical Diploma. Thank you Hayley. I'm Matt Watkins and I'm a lecturer on the Level 2 and Level 3 Sports Programme. I'm going to give you an overview of what the Level 2 Programme looks like and what it prepares you for for the next stage of your career. So the Level 2 Programme would act as the building block to prepare you ready with more confidence to enter the sporting industry, whether this be to enter our level three programme or to enter into your career straight away. So this programme has units that are very practical based. This is purposely set up to give you more confidence and to be able to apply it in the sporting industry. For example, a sports injury unit be based around how you would identify different types of injuries and then how you'd act to help treat them and this would be ideal in a number of sporting situations so that is why that unit is selected. Secondly we also have a practical sports unit this will develop your ability to teach and coach a range of sports which would be very useful if you are looking to go into the teaching and coaching industry. Likewise, this will also develop your confidence, which can be transferable into a number of different roles. So how your day would look if you were to enter the course. You would typically have a number of lectures throughout the day with academy also in the afternoon. You would be in four days a week with one day to study at home. So that's where maybe you could go and get some experience in the sporting industry and you can also get on with assignments. I'm now going to pass you on to Julianne and she's going to explain to you what the Level 3 programme looks like. Thank you Matt, my name is Julianne Clark and I'm a lecturer on the Level 2 and Level 3 sport programmes as well as the second year course shooter. Level 3 diploma is sports coaching and development is a course for anyone who is passionate about sport PE and would like to develop their coaching and leadership skills further. You'll study a range of sporting units across the week with each tutor, such as sports nutrition, sports injuries, fitness testing and training, and development of coaching skills. And because we know how much you all want to participate in practical, we make sure there's a practical unit every single term. The great thing about this course, as I'm sure you'll agree, it has no exam, it is all coursework based. You'll be assessed in a variety of different ways, such as delivering coaching sessions, group presentations, writing reports, and practical data collection, which you'll receive support and guidance with all the way through from your tutors. The course is delivered over four days a week, 
and depending on the group you're in, you'll either have a Monday or a Thursday off college. These days can be used as an additional day to study, for your assignments, or if you wish, you can get a part-time job alongside your studies. The aim of this course is to prepare you for your future and develop your confidence in sports coaching. Each year, we're given the opportunity to go into the sporting industry and gain work experience, and we put you through a number of additional courses like first aid to boost your CV. Previous students have gone into full-time employment in the leisure and fitness industry and university for those who wish to continue their studies further. They pursue careers in teaching, coaching, gym instructing, physiotherapy, sports psychology, just to name a few. Upon completion of this course and you achieving the grade required, you'll be invited onto our second year program, the Extended Diploma in Sports Coaching and Development, which will give you a qualification equivalent to three A levels and the UCAS points required if you wish to continue your studies in university. Now, over to Nick Priest, who will talk to you about our practical sports academies, our facilities, and much more. Thank you, Julianne. To expand on Julianne's comments about exams, no level two or level three students are required to take part in exams. We assess our students throughout the year with ongoing coursework, whether that's theory or practical based, it's a supportive process. Across all our programmes, our main aim is to ensure our students are more employable. To support this, all our students take part in additional qualifications such as First Aid and a Level 2 Sports Leaders Award. We also ensure our students take part in a minimum of 30 hours of work placement per year, across each year. In addition to this, what students like most, on all timetables, our students will have an allocated seven hours per week of practical sport. During this time, students can take part in a variety of sports or select a specific sport to develop in. They would take part in four hours a week training and they would take part in up to three hours a week in competitions and cups in our national leagues. In addition to this, we also provide all students with a 0.4 gym membership, full access, that's spa, facilities, exercise classes, and that's throughout the year. Our main aim is to improve your strength and conditioning and your confidence when exercising. So if you'd like a job where you enjoy every day, the sports course is a perfect start for you. I look forward to receiving your applications and hopefully meeting you all soon. Thank you very much, take care. Hi there, Craig Smith here from the Herefordshire and Ludlow College. Um, I'm the Programme Manager of the Public Services course at the Hereford campus and I'm just going to talk you through a few aspects of what our programme entails. So we have um, a range of different programmes on public services, range from our level two all the way up to a higher national diploma, which is a level five qualification. So we have a level two diploma in public services, which is our entry level qualification. Um, what you will need to progress onto the programme is uh, five GCSEs at three or below, but two of those must be English and maths. So you must have a three in English and maths. We do treat each situation on its own merit. So if there's a particular circumstance as to why you haven't, obviously we'll listen to those and we'll make each judgment based on the, your own individual circumstance. We also have our level three public services programme, which is actually a two year programme. So our 90 credit diploma, which is the first year, you need five GCSEs and one of those must be a four or above in English. Once again, there is a little bit of wiggle room with the GCSEs. Um, the English tends to be something we don't have much wiggle room for though. So you will need to have a level four or above in English or completed our level two program uh, to a distinction standard. We then have our year two, which is the extended diploma in public services. Um, this is uh, an extension from the first year. And then we have our HNC and HND, which are level four and level five, which essentially are like foundation degree level qualifications. Public services is a fantastic course for anybody who wants to explore um, what it takes to work in the public sector, whether that be the emergency services, the military services, or any of the uniformed public services. As I'm sure you're all aware at the moment, public service is a big part of what makes uh, our society flourish and perform as well as it should do. So this is a very apt course for the times we're in. If you like doing practical, we do a lot of outdoor uh, education on the programme. Uh, we do a lot of fitness and on combat role play scenario type uh, evidence gathering. So if you're a very go-getter, like to be doing type learner, this is a fantastic programme for you. Um, things that we look for from our students is a can-do attitude or a PMA, positive mental attitude. You have to have one of those. Uh, public service work is very demanding and difficult, so we're looking to progress our students into a future, into careers in those avenues. So you must come uh, ready to go with that attitude. College is three days a week, um, depending on what programme you're on. 
um, and that'll be a mixture, a blended uh, course of directed study, English and maths if you don't have it, and your vocational studies, meaning your units with different tutors. Um, no one day is the same on public services. You could be kayaking or canoeing or caving with Darren on a Monday, and you could be doing fitness testing or on combat or um, some sort of like self-defense training with myself on a Tuesday, and then you could be looking at how laws are made and how politics work with Pauline if you're on our level three program. And the exact same thing, people often ask what's the difference between level two and level three. It's a very simple answer. It's just slightly easier. Um, you know, the assignments aren't as rigorous and there aren't as many of them. Um, but the experiences, the trips, everything is almost identical. So um, that's not something to be disheartened about if you don't quite get the grade parameters for our level three. Level two is still a fantastic program. Um, questions that we often get asked, um, how much does the course cost? Which is £325, but that is for the course material, so that pays for absolutely everything. All the trips, um, the public services uniform, all the equipment you use. The actual qualification is free through the government if you're 16 to 19 years old. Um, I think that's pretty much it guys. Um, if you have any questions, queries or concerns, uh, you can email myself, I'm the Programme Manager of Public Services for the Hereford campus on smithcraig at hlcollege.ac.uk. That's smithcraig at hlcollege.ac.uk and I will happily give you a phone call and we can discuss the matter further. Take care guys, thank you very much. Okay, so there we are. There we go, everyone. That's, that's our, our introduction to all of the different courses in this particular seminar. Now, as I say, we've got the tutors on hand if there's anything they haven't covered in the, in the video there. Um, I've got a couple of questions just to go with to Joe to begin with. Uh, so if I just pop you on screen, Joe. Your moment in the limelight. Um, just a couple of questions around placements, uh, if possible. Um, how long is a placement day and are placements paid? Do, do you get paid for doing them? Okay, so um, no, the placement is on a voluntary basis um, and we usually look for the hours being approximately six hours with the children. Um, if you were to sit and have your lunch with the children, you can count those hours. But if you were to go into the staff room or, or go home, if you live local, um, you're unable to, to count those hours. So we look for a minimum of six hours per day with the children. OK, brilliant. Um, and, and, and how are you assessed within that placement? How, how does that aspect of it work? OK, so there are a number of occupational competencies that need to be um, assessed. Uh, we have a workplace assessor, Jenny, who is absolutely lovely. She comes out and uh, a mutual convenient time for the setting and for, for the students. Um, she will give you guidance on what she will be looking for and she'll support you in college um, to, to do that. Um, and then she will come out and she will observe you. You would just go the, about your normal business and um, working with the children and she would then type up a, a report. Um, all the reports are progressive, you know, um, it's about building your confidence, it's about um, progressing in your skills and becoming more and more confident with the staff, the parents and, and of course the, the children. Um, so each time she'd give you feedback on what you could do to, to work and, and, and get better with, with your skills. Um, so that's also supported with your nursery or your school teacher, depending on what setting that you're in in at the time. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to jump across to uh, public services now to Craig. If I'll just pop you on screen, Craig. Hi there. So um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, if someone's done public services, that they've done the level three, is it just a, a career in a public service that they can go and do or is there further study options they can do? Yes, yeah, so there's lots of study options for progression from our level three program. So this year we've uh, we are going to run a HNC and a HND in public services, which are level four and level five qualifications. So ideally students would finish the level three program with us 
and then extend on to our HNC, our Higher National Certificate in Public Services. But quite a few of our students often uh, opt to go to university to study subjects such as criminology, police, science and outdoor education. OK, brilliant. Um, and have any past students done anything notable career wise? Yes, we've got lots of ex students who are now working in the public services. Quite a few students in Hereford are in the Hereford Police. We have lots of students who are in the armed forces. Um, I can't say too much about it, Dave. We also have students in special forces, and I'll leave that there. OK, yeah, that's fair enough. OK, thanks, Greg. Um, Nick, if we jump across to you for sport. Similar sort of question, really. Um, sort of uh, in terms of sort of further study after the level three what are the the options available um it, it's really down to the students um they can go off to university lots of our students go off to universities now and follow careers in, in teaching in, in professional coaching nutrition uh, and so on um but you you don't necessarily have to go to university you can go straight into the industry with the experience gained in the programs um, looking at leisure attendance personal trainers um, and teaching assistants um, and, and, and students have gone on to do that and, and we've had a number of students who now are, are teachers um, and are professionals working in, in Herefordshire and beyond really. OK, brilliant. Um, and the, uh, the sports academies, um, yes. what sort of sports are there that, that can be done? Is it sort of set sports or is it a case of if there's enough demand? Could be yeah, someone else, a or? bit of both really. We try and offer what we can. Uh, really depends on the uptake of students. But at the moment, we've got a football academy and a netball academy um, because that's the, the, the biggest demand uh, we have in the past for academies for, for basketball and rugby. It just really um, depends on the uptake. Um, so if the students don't have an interest in, in football or netball or, or have done that a lot at school and want to try something new, we also offer a uh, fitness academy. Um, where they learn about the fitness industry and learn how to, to instruct others and how to safely and effectively work and exercise themselves. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Um, Susie, if I can come across to yourself now uh, just to talk about health and social care. Um, so just a couple of quick questions. Um, don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, in terms of uh, sort of results day if a student hasn't got the grade to go into the level three what are their options come that time uh, if they haven't got the grade then we offer a yeah. level two in health and social care as well and so on that level two course then we can support them to retake either maths or english which is the most likely um, subject that they haven't been successful in um, then it's a year on our level two program and then they pro can progress on to level three uh, health and social care. Equally, if they wanted to do a level two childcare um, course for a year, they can still progress on to level three health and social care if that's what they chose to do. Oh, OK, so you can move sideways between the. You can move sideways. I mean, people change their minds on on courses all the time, and so we always have something that we can offer them, even though they they have a slightly different um, choice from maybe the one that they started with at the beginning. OK. Brilliant. Um, and then the sort of qualification once they've finished level three, is it just university they can do or can they go straight into industry? No, they, they can go into industry, but actually because we have um, higher education within the college, um, sometimes they choose to stay within the local area and so they progress onto our foundation degrees in health and social care or mental health or um, counselling or childcare. So we have a number of options available for them. We also have uh, newly on board the HNC in public services. So all of these options are available to anyone that completes a level three in health and social care. Um, they can also go into working in industry with a level three. It, it kind of shows that you're professionally competent and so they can progress. Yeah, really yeah. well. OK, brilliant. Um, I think that's all of the questions uh, we've been sent in advance. Um, so assuming there's no further questions, we'll wrap that session up there. Um, if anyone's got any further questions, uh, they're more than welcome to contact us via the contact form on the website or um, via the social media channels. And we can happily direct any queries to the, the relevant tutors for the relevant courses. Um, if you need any more information, please just ask. Thank you very much. <laughs>